Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shuhaida Arifin and you're watching News at 10. Our headlines tonight. New SOP for Umrah and entry to premises. MPN proposes reopening nation's borders on March. Senior Defence Minister Atuk Sri Hishamuddin Tun Hussein today said that the timing for implementing the, transi the transition to the endemic phase will be decided by the Special Committee on COVID-19 Pandemic Management. The committee is chaired by Prime Minister Atuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob with opposition members of parliament and health experts as its members. Saya tahu bahawa, um Banyak pihak mula bimbang susulan gelombang penularan varian Omicron sedang meningkat dalam kes-kes harian kita. Tetapi saya nak menyatakan di sini bahawa kita tidak boleh berganjak daripada perancangan untuk melangkah ke fasa seterusnya. Bahawa maknanya kalau PKPD yang kita nak buat susulan kepada kemungkinan spike di lokasi-lokasi dan lokaliti-lokaliti tertentu kita boleh lakukannya tetapi nationwide lockdown macam dulu tak mungkin kita akan revisit Speaking after the COVID-19 Quartet Minister's meeting today, Datuk Sri Hishamuddin added that in order to move into the endemic phase, the country's healthcare system, especially bed usage in wards and intensive care units ICU, should be under control and the people should understand the seven pillars for the transition. In other development, Datuk Seri Hishamuddin also announced a new set of COVID-19 SOPs for those wishing to perform Umrah in Saudi Arabia, including a mandatory COVID-19 booster shot. The new SOPs come into effect on 14 February. Agent Perancongan perlu memantau kepatuhan jemaah Umrah semasa di Tanah Suci, perjalanan balik ke Malaysia dan semasa di PME Malaysia, Terus serta dengan jemaah sekiranya melebihi 40 orang disediakan bagi setiap tempoh tersebut untuk jumlah jemaah kurang dari 40 orang kekal mewajibkan dos penggalak ketiga membenarkan menjalani kuantin wajib di tempat kediaman tanpa memohon kelulusan HQA tetapi jemaah jemaah dibenarkan menjalankan kuantin wajib di stesen kuantin swasta dengan kos penginapan, makan minum dan rawatan ditanggung sendiri. As for congregants leaving for the Holy Land from today until 13 February, the senior minister said they are bound by the existing SOPs. However, he said when they return home, they will be required to comply with the new SOPs that have been introduced. Meanwhile, the senior minister said that starting from 11th February, the government will abolish the SOP on temperature check and check-in record books at any premises. However, registration using the MySujatera application is still mandatory. Dengan pemasuan ini, pihak pemilik premis tidak lagi diwajibkan untuk menyediakan alat pengimbas suhu dan buku rekod check-in di pintu-pintu masuk premis masing-masing. Namun check-in ini menggunakan uh, aplikasi MySejahtera masih diwajibkan seperti biasa. Walau bagaimanapun sekiranya pemilik-pemilik premis masih ingin meneruskan pelaksanaan SOP pemeriksaan suhu dan buku rekod check-in, uh, kerajaan amat mengalu-alukan dan menggalakkannya. 
The National Recovery Council, NPN, has proposed for the full reopening of the country's border as early as 1st March without the mandatory quarantine requirement. Its chairman, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, said the reopening of the borders was vital to support the country's recovery process, especially in the economic and tourism sectors, and also to attract foreign investments to Malaysia. Majlis bersetuju supaya sempadan negara dapat dibuka sepenuhnya seawal 1 Mac 2022 tanpa keperluan untuk kuarantin wajib. Namun begitu ujian COVID-19 sebelum berlepas dan sejurus tiba di pintu sempadan negara perlu dilakukan mengikut SUR KKM. Speaking after chairing the MPN meeting, Tan Sri Muhyiddin said the proposed reopening of the country's borders should not be limited to certain countries but instead be open to all. He said the recommendation could be implemented as the country's public health management system would be able to control the spread of Omicron variants based on experience apart from having adequate health facilities. Malaysia recorded 13,944 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours in a sharp surge that marks what is likely to be the start of a fresh new infection wave fueled by the more contagious Omicron variant. Health Director General Tansuri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said that the numbers has brought the cumulative COVID-19 cases to 2.93 million. The last time Malaysia recorded new cases, more than 13,000, was on 26 September last year. In a tweet on his official account, Tansri Dr. Nur Hisham said, Out of the new cases reported today, 99.48% of them were in categories 1 and 2. While 73 cases or 0.52% were in categories 3, 4 and 5. The health DG, however, said, the hospitalization rate has remained stable to date, even as the new dominant variant continues to push daily cases up exponentially. As of yesterday, only 40% of total beds allocated for COVID-19 patients had been utilized. The infectivity rate RT for Malaysia recorded as 1.32, compared 1.27 yesterday, with Sabah and Perlis locked the highest RT value with 1.54, and followed by Sarawak 1.48 and Terengganu 1.36. In the meantime, as of yesterday, a total of 12.47 million adult population in the country have received their COVID-19 booster shots. The Health Ministry remains committed to ensuring the welfare of private support service staff in public hospitals as they are also the frontliners in combating the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin said although these workers were under the responsibility of their respective concession companies, the Health Ministry is also responsible to ensure that their welfare is always protected. Walaupun mereka adalah pekerja di bawah syarikat konsesi Tetapi syarikat konsesi itu adalah syarikat konsesi yang menerima konsesi daripada Kementerian Kesihatan Jadi kebajikan mereka juga tanggungjawab saya dan kami di Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia Tuntutan-tuntutan yang dibangkitkan dan yang disebut tadi akan kita melihat secara komprehensif Saya akan ada perjumpaan dengan uh, syarikat konsesi untuk memahami uh, dengan lebih mendalam lagi uh, semua uh, perkara yang telah dibangkitkan. The ministers said this after receiving a memorandum from the National Union of Workers in Hospital Support and Allied Services in Putrajaya today. The memorandum, which was handed over by the union's chairman, Rosia Mohamad Hashim, among others, demanded that a COVID-19 allowance be given to all support staff at government hospitals, besides requesting for the abolition of the contract system. Meanwhile, Rosia expressed her gratitude because Kari had stated his commitment to look into the union's demands. Coming up next, 
Keluarga Malaysia plays role in strengthening cyber ecosystem. Yang di-Pertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Billah Shah has decreed the government to come up with a long-term solution and strengthen disaster management mechanism. His Majesty said major cities such as Kuala Lumpur and Klang Valley areas, which act as country's economy and financial centre, must have proper contingency plan in facing natural disasters such as floods. Nevertheless, as Sultan Abdullah said, despite the flood disaster, he was deeply moved by the solidarity and the spirit of helping others displayed by Malaysians during the disaster. Sebenarnya, sikap muni seperti inilah yang menjadi kayu pengukur akan rasa saling sayang menyayangi serta perpaduan erat oleh seluruh rakyat kereta yang merintasi darjat maupun bangsa, agama dan fahaman politik. Meanwhile, Al Sultan Abdullah also reminded those who have not been vaccinated against COVID-19 to do so. His Majesty said it included getting a booster dose to ensure the country could control the COVID-19 pandemic. His Majesty said this at the investiture of Federal Territory Awards, Medals and Honours in conjunction with the 2022 Federal Territory Day at Istana Negara earlier today. Also present at the ceremony was Raja Pemaisuri Agong, Tunku Haja Aziza Aminah Maimunah Iskandariah. Keluarga Malaysia has to play their roles to tackle cyber threats and crimes by developing discipline and self-control to instill and strengthen community cohesion in the cyber ecosystem. Prime Minister Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri Yaakob in a Facebook post in conjunction with the Safer Internet Day 2022 said, the roles of Keluarga Malaysia were also vital in creating a positive and harmonious cyber environment. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said, during the pandemic, most Malaysian families had shifted towards the use of digital technology in every aspect of life, which led to a transformation in communication and social patterns. He said the situation had also caused people to be callous in keeping their manners and code of ethics in mind while being in the cyber world. Although digital technology helped them a lot in their daily activities, he said, the misuse of technology was still being committed, including in the use of the internet and social media by irresponsible parties to the extent of causing the emergence of various cyber threats and crimes. Meanwhile, Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa called on Keluarga Malaysia to work together to create a resilient digital community capable of acting in a knowledgeable, fair and progressive manner towards cyber wellness. In conjunction with the Safer Internet Day 2022, the Malaysian edition theme, Kita Cyber, he said the emphasis was constantly being given on measures to develop self-control and a sense of responsibility in themselves and others to create a harmonious and progressive Gloria Malaysia digital community. The theme Kita Cyber derives from four dimensions of digital community well-being of K, communication, I, inclusivity, T, responsible and A, closeness. Tansri Anwar said the evolution of digital technology had indeed helped and facilitated the people in many ways, but they must also be prepared in the face of increasing threats and cyber attacks, apart from the risk of destroying moral values and ethical standards. The labour market has been improving since last December with a lower unemployment rate of 4.2% in December and fourth quarter of 2021. According to the Department of Statistics Malaysia, DOSM, with all states in Phase 4 of the National Recovery Plan, PPN, starting January 2022, has become the catalyst to the recovery of labour sector. 
in phase four, business and social activities were able to operate at full capacity and more travel activities within the country and abroad had also contributed to higher employment rate. It added last December, the working population continued to increase with a marginal increase of 0.2% month on month to 15.65 million people. The ratio of employment to population indicating the economic ability to create employment recorded a slight increase to 66.1%. Employment in the services sector remained high for the six months apart from the manufacturing and construction sectors, recording positive growth for five consecutive months. While employment in the agriculture, mining and quarrying sectors continued to decline since August 2020, the overall labour force participation rate LFPR for last year rose 0.2 percentage point to 68.6 percent compared to 68.4 percent in 2020 and the increase in employment was due to the low working population in 2020. The positive developments signal that the labour market was expected to continue to improve in the coming months, but this did not take into account the challenges of new and more dangerous COVID-19 variants. Still to come in sports, FAM continues bidding to host 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers. The Football Association of Malaysia FAM are standing firm in their decision to bid for the job of hosting the third round of the 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers in June. FAM President Atul Hamidin Muhammad Amin said that despite a spike in the number of COVID-19 infections in the country, he was confident that the Omicron variant wave was under control and the number of cases could be reduced, as stated by the Health Ministry. He said FAM also did not make any changes to the Standard Operating Procedures SOP in their application to the Youth and Sports Ministry for the hosting of the tournament. Datu Hamidin said he was told that most of the countries competing in the third round qualifiers had also bid to host the tournament. As such, he hoped that the national team, under the guidance of new head coach Kim Pangon, would be ready to do their best even if they have to play elsewhere. FAM are bidding to host the tournament to ensure the national team would enjoy home ground advantage in their mission to qualify for the 2023 Asian Cup Finals. The Harimau Malaya are aiming to qualify for the 2023 Asian Cup Finals, having last appeared in the finals of the 2007 edition as co-hosts. Malaysia Airlines Berhad MAB has taken its support for the national football team to a higher level after it officially unveiled a special livery bearing the Harimau Malaya emblem on its Airbus A330-300 aircraft today. The effort also signifies the close collaboration and shared visions between MAB and FAM as two of the nation's well-known brands. The exterior of the wide-body aircraft was transformed to visually represent the two national icons by integrating the red stripes of the Jalogamilang with the majestic Harimau Malaya emblem, which symbolizes the collaboration, strength and unity between the brands. The library design was created by Dr. Muhammad Razif Abdul Raza and Dr. Verli Veto Vermong of the College of Creative Arts, University Technology Mara in collaboration with FAM. FAM President Datuk Hamidin Mama Amin said the Harimau Malaya aircraft livery could be linked to an upgrade in the partnership between the National Football Governing Body and MAB. In the meantime, MAB also launched its Harimau Malaya and Reach 2022 card, which is specially curated and designed with the Harimau Malaya emblem and offering special privileges for their members and national football supporters. 
Malaysia are drawn in Group B with Japan, Singapore and Kazakhstan in the men's category in the Badminton Asia Team Championships BATC. The draw was made today for the Asian event at the City City Convention Centre on 15th to 20th February in Shalom. Thomas Cup's winners Indonesia are in Group A with India, South Korea and Hong Kong. However, the Malaysian women's team are in for a stiffer challenge after being drawn in Group Y together with the defending champions Japan and India. In Group Z, Indonesia are drawn together with South Korea, Hong Kong and Kazakhstan. The top two teams for each group will advance to the semi-finals and also earn automatic qualification to the Thomas Cup and Uber Cup finals in Bangkok on May. News at 10. In our top story, new SOP for Umrah and entry to premises. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Until then, I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Stay tuned to Salunam Bita TM and have a pleasant evening.